Okay, so here we have type 3 or immune complex disease, type 3 hypersensitivity. And type 3 hypersensitivity is going to involve um, some source of antigen. And this source of antigen is going to combine with antibody and generate immune complexes. And the antigen must be a polyvalent antigen, which means that each antigen binds more than one antibody. And this is important because the antibodies are eventually going to aggregate and form immune complexes. Now, immune complexes, complexes can be cleared by complement, and or they can cause disease. So you can have immune complex disease, which can be a localized disease, such as an arthritis reaction or the farmer's lung. It can also be a glomerulonephritis, uh, or it can be systemic. And it can be systemic lupus. It can be systemic glomerulonephritis, if it's going to be in more than one place, the lungs and the kidneys, for example. Um, and so this would be an example of post-strep infection uh, where you have circulating immune complex complexes. Now the formation of your complex depends on the ratio of antibody and antigens. So if the ratio is equal or slightly increased, then you'll have large complexes form. And so drugs can um, cause localized immune complexes, and this is known as the arthritis reaction. And we can also have environmental um, factors. And this can be dust plus fungal spores. And again, most of us can deal with mold spores. They're not a problem. Um, but this can lead to, in the case of um, inhalation of the spores, inflammation in the alveoli. Um, after several hours, uh, and so this is not um, immediate hypersensitivity, this is a type 3 hypersensitivity and it's known as farmer's lung. So most of this is going to be mediated by IgG. And so what is shown here is that early in infection you only have a few antigens and the antibodies get produced. You have small immune complexes form and circulate. And as your antibodies levels rise, you can form these larger um, complexes. And then antigen levels are going to fall and the immune complexes no longer get produced because there's not enough antigen present to form them. So some infections such as Hep B, if it's not cleared, um, can cause um, antigen in anemia. Which means a lot of antigen circulating. Um, and this can cause immune complexes. So 
So the Arthas reaction is where you have injection of a drug or a vaccine, intradermal, and so often it's accidental, and this can cause an immune complex to form. if IgG is present. And this can induce inflammation. And just as a note, you have IgE responses. And this is seconds. And then you have type three responses and this is about hours and then you're going to have type 4 which we'll talk about next and this is going to be about two days so there's a timing element to help to decipher which type of um, hypersensitivity the patient is experiencing and so this again you have a patient who has levels of IgG in tissues so they first got exposed to a drug or vaccine, and then the antigen gets injected into the dermis instead of the muscle, for example, or instead of the blood, um, and the complexes will form, and these will activate complement. Mast cell can also degranulate and release an anaphylactoxin, um, and that's going to cause neutrophils to come also through complement, and then you're going to get an acute inflammatory response. Now serum sickness is where you have circulating immune complexes. And this is usually only seen um, when you have cancer patients or autoimmune disease or autoimmune patients. Seen with cancer or autoimmune patients. treated with monoclonal antibodies. It got its name from um, horses. Horse serum used to be um, transferred and used for therapies and we humans mounted an immune response against the horse antibodies and so that became known as serum sickness. And now we don't of course do that anymore but patients who are cancer patients or autoimmune patients, they might get monoclonal antibodies. For example, an autoimmune patient might get an anti-CD40 ligand antibody uh, or anti-CD28 antibody. And these are usually made in mice. And so the patient will develop anti-mouse antibodies. And so repeated injections will, will generate um, immune complexes. So one way to overcome this is to make humanized antibodies. And this is typically going to give you fever, rash, and joint pain. Now, systemic lupus is also going to be associated with type 3. We talked about it with type 2, but it's also associated with type 3. Um, you have DNA as an antigen, and it's the most prevalent immune complex disease. I'm sorry, it's not type 2, it's type 3. Um, we're talking about type 3. So... So systemic lupus is the most prevalent 
immune complex disease. And again, DNA gets released into circulation when cells die. And then you can get um, mostly removal of the DNA through your innate system, um, through the complement system, the man and binding lectin system. And if you have deficiencies of those, this can reduce the removal and it can induce an antibody response. You can detect anti-nuclear antibodies in a patient by ELISA. And the immune complexes are going to affect their joints. The skin kidneys. Um, it can lead to kidney failure if untreated. Um, central nervous system, uh, placenta, which can lead to miscarriage. And you're going to treat with immune suppressive drugs. Now, immune complex clearance is going to be mostly by um, two mechanisms. The first is you're going to have complement, which can help to break down large complements, complexes. And then the second is your red blood cell is going to transfer complexes to macrophages. So RBCs have complement receptor 1. which is CD35, and it'll tr pick up immune complexes with complement and transfer to the macrophage in the spleen or liver. And then the macrophage will eat the immune complexes. Um, so complement receptor 1 is going to bind to C3B, so the specific complement component that it binds to. Um, C3B is what's going to be inserting itself and breaking up the lattices, so that's how the complement component that's involved in that. Now, complement, complexes, again, when you have an infection, when you have a lot of antigens around and your balance between antibody antigen is going to be such that you form immune complexes where they're almost equal or just you have a little bit more antigen, the complexes are going to form. So complexes can form during infections in anybody. And they must be cleared, and this is usually going to be transient, um, except for diseases such as hepatitis B. So infections can lead to immune comp transient immune complexes that are cleared, he except chronic infections such as Hep B. Now, the clearance via complement receptor 1 to the macrophage is very effective. Uh, but it can be saturated. Uh, 
Um, and this can be if there's an excess of immune complexes or ongoing immune complex production or a lack of complement. Now, the innate immune response is going to be activated by immune complexes. So remember, you have immunoglobulins attached that have complement binding regions. So you're going to have complement activated and you're going to have C5A plus C5 or C3A, which is going to recruit. Um, and then you're going to have activation of your newts. And your mast cells and platelets by complement. And your newts and mast cells are going to release proteolytic enzymes. And these are going to damage blood vessels. And then this is going to initiate inflammations. Platelets can form a thrombus. Um, and so, again, you're going to have disease associated with a failure to clear your immune complexes. Now, you have, um, with respect to the different types of immune complex disease, you have some local damage, and then you have more systemic damage. So we can have local damage and those are the um, drug, the Arthas reaction, or the farmer's lung. And then you can have systemic, such as with systemic lupus, where you have damage to the joint, skin, kidney. Um, you also have your glomular cells and synovial cells. So with systemic lupus, you're going to have damage to your joints, skin, especially the synovial cells. So skin. Um, and of course, kidney and this can lead to failure. And then what's interesting about your um, cells of your glomerulus and your synovial is that they express complement receptor one. So let me make a note. And we just said that CR1 on red blood cells can bind to complement and can take those immune complexes to the liver and the spleen to get eliminated. However, if they get stuck on your glomerulus or in your synovial cells, they do not get um, eliminated and they can actually induce inflammation at those sites. Uh, so in the kidney, we can have, let me put this here. And in the kidney, you can have kidney failure. So you can have nephrotic syndrome.
and this is where the complex is deposited in the basement membrane. And they're going to activate complement and damage membrane and leak proteins into the urine. And then you have nephritis. In which you have um, complement plus cell infiltrate. And this is going to be a more rapid onset and you have blood and proteins in the urine. And so you have your post strep glomerular nephritis that we've talked about, which is following a streptococcus infection. This has a fast onset but short duration. So this is all to do with the kidney. So it has fast onset, but short duration. And then you have drugs that can cause this. And if you stop the drugs, you stop the disease. And you have systemic lupus, where it is autoantigens, so it's slow onset but not self-limiting. And then treatment is going to be antigen avoidance. So if you have a drug allergy um, or try to avoid getting strep, etc. Um, so this is also going to be our spores And then you can also have corticosteroids, which will block some damage. And then you have your cyclophosphamide. And this can impair DNA synthesis. Thought to help by decreasing B cell proliferation. And this decreases, of course, antibody production. Okay, so that is the end of type 3 or 